In the recent past, Kimani Mbugwa said and done unimaginable things. If you owe me money, if you owe me money, if you owe me money. He has made dubious claims like Uhuru Kenyatta is his father, Elon Musk is his business partner, and that he's running for president in 2027. His family has not been spared. He has attacked his mother, claiming that she's a thief and also said that his father stole his car. His claims are endless and illogical. This is not normal, and the reality is that Kimani Mbugwa is suffering from bipolar disorder. What people fail to understand is the torture, and the torture happens in your mind. Bipolar disorder falls under mental illnesses, but sadly, Mental health is not a subject taught in most schools. Topics like depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder are still new things that people are starting to learn. So when Kimani Mbugwa says he's suffering from bipolar disorder, some people might understand while others don't, thinking that Kimani is mad or is just seeking attention. <laughs> Kimani Mbuga rose quickly through the ranks in the media industry. He was a famous face on local television stations like NTV, Citizen TV and Inoro. You're watching Broke News because it's January and my name is Kimani Mbuga as always. I have a very simple question for you. He became a news anchor at a young age, even working for two TV stations at the same time. He was popular, loved by fans, but suddenly he went missing from the screens. We all remember Kimani Mbugwa from the days of broken news, the traffic update on citizen television, and even appeared on the trend several times. Kimani was lovable, he was eloquent and talented, and many people believed that Kimani will soar to higher levels within the media industry just like Larry Madoo or Jeff Koinange. But that never happened or it's yet to happen. His struggle with psychosis and mental illness affected his career and robbed him of his promising media career. The once vibrant Kimani Mbugwa is not vibrant anymore. His family and also Kenyans have tried to save Kimani Mbugwa and they are still willing to save him again. And before you persecute Kimani Mbugwa, let's first learn about the story of Kimani Mbugwa, how he went from broken news to literally breaking the news with his recent posts. And also talk about mental health. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy this content. We're heading to 50,000 subscribers. So I ask you to be part of this wonderful journey. And also remember to follow me on Instagram at ongori.reports. Kimani was born in Maragua which is located in Moranga County. His parents, Dedan Bugwa and Paris Bugwa, are members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, so Kimani was raised in a devout Christian home. He had to adhere to the teachings and strict rules of the Adventist Church. In case you have no idea, it is believed that the SDA Church was founded by James White and Ellen G. White. The church believes that God created earth in six days and rested on the seventh day which was on Saturday. That's why they go to church on Saturdays. The church opposes abortion, tattoos, body piercings, the use of alcohol and tobacco, eating unclean meat like pork, and even wearing jewelry. And the rules are too many, so you understand why I say they have strict rules. Apart from reading books about the church, Kimani just loved reading books, and these books in the long run helped him polish his English speaking and writing skills from primary school to high school where he attended the famous Njiri school. He schooled at Njiri school from Form 1 to Form 2 and in Form 3 he was transferred to an Adventist school called Karura SDA. According to Kimani, Adventist kids at Njiri school were not allowed to go to church on Saturdays, which is their day of worship. It was a tough decision 
but his parents had no choice. At Karura SDA, Kimani Mbugwa scored an A-. minus. This performance impressed his local SDA church, and it's alleged that they decided to sponsor his media studies at Moi University. Growing up, he didn't know what he wanted to become. His parents wanted him to become a lawyer or a doctor, but Kimani had a different dream. He wanted to pursue journalism, and true to his word, that's the exact thing he went to do at Moi University. I'm a very decisive person. Eh? Okay. I already know what I want uh, well, before I, I go for it. Uh, I chose journalism, 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 more university, more university, more university, ah. more university. And I was like, this is what I want to do, communication and journalism. Mo University has a fully equipped radio station, and Kimani Mbugwa ended up joining the station. He knew he wanted to be on radio and television, doing what he loved. He had a music show called The Rock Asylum, which he hosted together with a co-host called Aylen. The show was a success. Kimani's presentation was outstanding. It was natural, flawless, and fulfilling. In 2015, Nation FM was running a talent show dubbed The Vocal Nation, a competition where the best radio hosts in university radios fought for a spot at the radio. Kimani got selected after auditioning for the role along with other university students across the country. At that time, he was only 19 years old. Quite some time, but uh, man, uh, the day was good. Uh, anyway, how was your day? And then, uh, just to make your day, just to make your day, um, we are going to give away a free campus courtesy of my network. Yay! And uh, if you don't know what my network is, uh, hello, hello, my network is the new magazine, fresh magazine of the Daily Nation, comes to you every Friday. Yes, and, uh, Nation changed his life completely. He worked as a social media and entertainment reporter, and also as a writer at my network. Larry Mado even invited Kimani to feature in his Larry Mado show, and Kimani would later feature on the trend on NTV. He worked there for almost three years, and then he went to Royal Media. At Royal Media, he got to work for Citizen TV, Inoro TV, and Hot 96. According to Kimani, he got into Citizen TV by accident. Uh, so for me, even getting on, on Citizen TV, it was, it was by accident. Mm. So they, they had this, uh, th this morning show, and somebody was, I think it was Patrick Igunza who was supposed to do the, the traffic report, mm. and he did it even for the first day. But then I think for him, he was like, this is too early, I can't be waking up at four <laughs> to come and do this, this, this stuff. <laughs> so I think he pulled out on the first day. He mm. only did one episode. Uh, so the next day they didn't have somebody to host. So uh, my editor then, uh, Pamela, called me and she was like, uh, look, we need somebody to, to do the, the traffic report in the morning. So uh, I've talked to Linus, so whatever you are doing on Visasa now, you like Maybe. just come on to 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 the the tv show you you'll be doing you'll be doing the morning traffic and whatever else is needed you hosted broken news and the traffic update on citizen tv plus a show called wadieko on inoro tv at some point, Kimani was working for two TV stations at the same time. That is how talented he was. After Citizen TV, he resigned and will later get an offer to work at Kenyans.co.ke where he hosted a show called Speed Feed. So the first thing is the basic structure doctrine. Uh, and this is basically um, the constitution of Kenya. Is some of the amendments that we can make, can they alter the document so much that it becomes something else entirely. The university where Kimani nurtured his talent as a journalist was also the same place he recalls experiencing severe depression. Having joined university before 18 years, Kimani was too young to access the Higher Education Loans Board funds or HELP, and that means he did not have enough money to sustain himself. His family was also going through a rough time, as his father wasn't able to provide any more and his mother became the sole breadwinner. The condition was so bad to the point that Kimani was contemplating taking his own life. I couldn't see a way out. You see, people see people commit suicide and the first thing they're like, how dare you? 
What people fail to understand is the torture. And the torture happens in your mind. At one point, he stayed in his room for three days without drinking or eating because life was not making sense and even wrote his own eulogy and posted it on Facebook. It was a major relief when he finally received some help funds in the second year. His depression resurfaced when he began working and this time it was severe, which made Kimani start abusing drugs to counter the depression. He started by smoking cigarettes and was smoking a whole packet of cigarettes a day. It's worth mentioning that Kimani Mbugwa was once in a relationship but since he was not getting the satisfaction he wanted, he cheated. His girlfriend then found out and they broke up. He described that moment as the worst breakup ever. He talks about that moment in detail in his podcast, the Kimani Mbuga podcast. It was bound to happen that, you know, I think somebody saw uh, me and the third girl at a date and I think they told the second girl and I think that's, she started suspecting me and then like she started doing her own investigation and she obviously got me because men are so poor at cheating even when you're cheating like men are like the worst at keeping that secret the breakup left him religious and he decided to attack the sda church in march 2020 kimani sparked controversy after branding the seventh day adventist church as a cult in a facebook video filmed in a car Kimani denounced the church that he claimed to have been a member for over 20 years and rubbished one of its founders, Ellen G. White, as a philosophical fraud. And this is what I think. If religion has done, if this religion and, and cult thing in the grand scheme of things, if it has done any damage to people's personal lives, the SDAs have had it the worst. They have been put down by Ellen White's material and they have been made to believe that the only person they can look up to for guidance is Ellen White. Bugu explained that he was not making the wild claims out of ignorance and he was willing to engage in a constructive conversation with anyone on the issue about the church and Ellen G. White. Kenya is a religious nation. We now have a religious president, so obviously the subject about churches and pastors is a taboo. As expected, people came out guns blazing in the comment section, condemning and cursing Kimani Mbugwa. Others even claimed that he was possessed by demons and demanded that he pull down the controversial post. Kimani Mbugwa would later ask for forgiveness and he deleted all the photos and posts containing his sentiments about the sensitive topic. According to him, his anger was misplaced and for that he was sorry. In his words he said that he was just an angry young person seeking answers and he was to seek help to deal with all the anger issues he was going through. He also asked God to forgive him for speaking against his anointed. In December 2019, Kimani met another girl. He was even set to wed the girl after he proposed to her at her workplace in 2020. But that affair also ended because of his shaky mental state. The breakup was one of his darkest times. It was not something he expected. At most times, he could not find any purpose in waking up in the morning. The situation was bad. Kimani also admitted that being thrown in the limelight at only 19 years old was a blessing and a curse. He experienced a lot of things he was not ready for. And by the fact that he was young and earning a lot of money, he got into the first life and will spend a lot of money on useless things. Kimani Mbuga's most traumatic event of his entire life started after he smoked weed. In February 2020, as he was driving home, he decided to smoke marijuana. He experienced an acute psychotic episode and completely lost contact with reality. According to Kimani, he saw a mysterious woman who was like a goddess who came to have sex with him and she even started calling his name. So on the, on the first day, it, it was this, this mysterious woman who, who came to me and she was pleasuring me. One thing that Kimani Mbuga didn't know is that he was genetically predisposed to a mental illness. So every time he smoked weed, it was affecting his mind and behavior. Weed is a psychoactive drug. Psychoactive drugs often bring various changes in consciousness and mood 
that the user may find rewarding and pleasant, such as euphoria or a sense of relaxation. Kimani never stopped. He continued to smoke it more and more. He did not think that he had a problem or things could get worse, but they did. Kimani became psychotic. He described his psychosis as a slow, gradual process of losing touch. He began to do and say things that other people did not understand. Kimani was experiencing manic episodes, which is an extreme change in mood and thinking that can interfere with school, work, or home life. Things that made sense to other people did not make sense to him, and things that did not make sense to other people started making sense to him. At first, he was taken to Avenue Hospital in Parklands, then he went to a rehab center called Bustani. After there, he was taken to Chiromo Len Medical Center, a rehab and mental health center, and eventually, he had to go to Madare Mental Hospital. According to the doctors, he was suffering from bipolar 1 that was partly catalyzed by his drug use. Bipolar 1 is believed to be the worst type of bipolar disorder because it has more severe manic episodes compared to bipolar 2. When he was admitted to Madare Mental Hospital, Kimani did not even know where he was or anything that was happening. He was totally not aware of the environment. He stayed in Madare for almost a year, and Kimani said that the total times he's been to a psych ward or a mental hospital is 13 times, to the point that his father almost gave up. I, I've stayed in Madare for mm. for almost a year. You back have? Back. Yes. What? Because I've, I've been admitted to Matare eight mm. times. Oh, Matare uh, Hospital. Uh, total total times I've been to psych ward me 13 times. Damn, in the bro. Last three, uh, in the last two years. years. In the last three years. Uh -huh. 13 Since times. Yeah, you're, you're, you're mob. Yeah. You're mob, Sana. In fact, my, I remember my dad, my dad told me uh, the la this last time before I was discharged, he was so disappointed. He was like, Kimani, I'm trying to support you the way I can, but you if I, if I no get you out of, if I get you out of hospital, mm and the doctors have given you a nod to go home and then you go back to drugs. I don't know what I'll do. Kimani praises his faith as a source of hope and meaning in his life. He says that becoming a Christian and especially a Catholic has made him to connect with God and self. And by the way, Kimani transitioned from the SDA church to the Catholic church. He confessed that he appreciates praying the rosary because it enables him to bring his mind to focus. Some people are calling him mad and an attention seeker, not knowing that Kimani Mbugwa is suffering from bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a major psychiatric disorder in which the person experiences occasional episodes of extremely elevated mood or mania. Most persons with this disorder also experience intermittent episodes of extremely low mood or depression. The symptoms of bipolar disorder can cause significant disruption to the person's ability to work, fulfill household responsibilities, and maintain interpersonal relationships. A WHO report ranked Kenya the fifth among African countries with the highest number of depression cases. It's estimated that one in every four Kenyans may be suffering from a mental disorder, ranging from mild to severe disorders. The good part is that you might not be one of them but the bad part is that it might be someone close to you. Now, in our beloved country Kenya, 22 out of 47 counties in Kenya do not have psychiatric units. And in a population of 45 million people, we only have about 100 psychiatrists. This is because mental health is not a priority in this country. Anyway, Kimanimbugwa is not the only victim of a mental disorder. Many Kenyan celebrities have opened up about dealing with depression and even attempting suicide. And my point is, depression is real. And Kiman even said that once you have experienced mental illness, it's a journey. You need to constantly be aware. It's not like a bacterial infection. You can just treat, then it goes away. I am homeless. <laughs> I'm homeless. I'm literally, I have my bag and I am out where I was living. The people I was leaving me said uh, they couldn't host me for any longer, so they told me to look for an alternative. In September 2023, Kimani uploaded this video. 
He narrated his struggle with mental illness and substance abuse and how people got tired of him and he was in a position where most people were not willing to help him because they were tired. He also mentioned that he had been clean for two months and was in the process of healing. He said that he had a business plan and he was asking for money, about 200,000 Kenya shillings, to start the business. Kimani then said that he does not own a phone and had borrowed one from a stranger just to upload the clip on social media. Kimani received overwhelming support from Kenyans during an online fundraiser led by digital content creator Nyako. The fundraiser surpassed expectations as people contributed 500,000. After receiving the money, Kimani said he was working on launching a creative agency. And in 2023, he launched a new YouTube show called The Unbroken. The first episode was posted on 15th October 2023. He posted several episodes, but after some time, his YouTube presence dwindled. But he remained active on TikTok. The last video posted on the YouTube channel is a picture of Jomo Kenyatta. And I don't understand why he used that title. Anyway, in the recent past, Kimanibugu has sparked worry over his social media posts like the Jomo Kenyatta one. He appears to be acting out of character. His condition makes him believe that his parents are not his parents and that his real father is Uhuru Kenyatta. He even believes that Elon Musk is his business partner. Mm. I thought Elon Musk was my business partner. <laughs> At one point he wanted to sue the government for withdrawal of his personal weapons and security. Still on his Instagram page, Kimani was captured shouting yes. and demanding the payment I've of odd debts. He even claimed that he had weapons to protect his money. In 4th May this year, he claimed that he bought the 1FM brand for 1 billion Kenyan shillings. His stories don't make sense and you can feel it's another drug-induced episode. It might sound funny but it is not and what Kimani is experiencing is the delusions of grandeur which is a type of delusion in bipolar disorder and it makes one believe that they are famous or publicly important or that they are God like Kanye West. In a recent interview with Oga Obina, Kimani's father pointed out that Kimani's issue began in 2020 after his drink was spiked while he was out celebrating his birthday. My daughter tells me very clean that aliona kwa grass yake kuna white substances zinawekwa. He said that they had physical evidence detailing the allegation, but sadly they lost it. A toxicology test later confirmed the presence of marijuana and other substances in Kimani's system, leading his father to believe his son had been spiked. People are now expressing sympathy for Kimani Mbugwa, wishing him well, and many Kenyans are realizing that this is not an attention stunt. Several Kenyans, including comedian Ogaobina, have stepped forward to offer their support to him and maybe this will be his redemption moment. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to like this video and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Let's meet on the next video.